four speed. You know what? I'm gonna tell you what I paid for this stuff. It's Freeman here with the Freeman's Garage extra video for you. I'm standing in front of the 1956 Chevy project and I just got back to Freeman's Garage from a swap meet, got a four speed. We'll dig into this in a little second here because we're going four on the floor with this car. And we got a bell housing. It's a specific bell housing that I was searching for. And we got some other sweet doodads. Let's take a look at this stuff. If we're meeting for the first time, I'm Freeman. That's the 56 Chevy project. We'll look at the four speed last. Save the best part for last. Let's look at the bell housing. In Freeman's garage here, this is extra videos, a supplement to the regular Freeman's garage channel. Subscribe to both if you don't mind. This is a 1955, 56, and 57 Chevy passenger car V8 bell housing. All right. And this is so this is a Tri 5 bell housing, the stock factory bell housing that would have come in this car from the factory. My, I didn't get this car with one. So that's why I was looking for one. Found it at this swap meet. And the reason why I wanted this bell housing specifically is because it'll bolt right up to, well, we got a 350 sitting over there. It'll bolt right up to the back of that engine. And this transmission here will bolt right up to this. Now that's not a Tri-5, a 55 through 57 transmission. We'll get to that in a second, but it will bolt right up to this bell housing and Using this bell housing, it just it makes it very easy in this car to run a 168 tooth flywheel and and a factory style starter that will bolt to the bell housing and all this factory or at least not well let me show you. This is all got all this at the swap meet. This is all our clutch linkage. Some of this stuff is original Tri-5 linkage. Some of it might not be because uh, the seller and I dug this stuff out of boxes and pieced it together. This is a, this is a cross shaft, also known as a Z-bar. I needed that part. And this is a rod. And it's got came with little little washers and stuff like that we need. And this is our bell housing bracket. And then we need this pivot ball, you could call it that. Now, this is for a 56, so it's got this curve and an offset cross shaft. I th I think 55 and 57, this needs this needs to be straight. Could be wrong. Double check that. If you end up in this video trying to figure stuff out for yourself, keep that in mind. You know, if you're starting at ground zero, but double check what I say. But I'm pretty sure I'm close in that. Double check it though. And here's our clutch fork. It's got the spring in here. And we were able to find a pin to put in here. And we we're able to find this rod, which is what we need. That's just about all we need for the clutch stuff. And we also got this little anti-rattle spring, if you will. And a washer. We need all that. <laughs> so we're good to go there. I'll show you this real quick up here on the car. Well, actually, maybe we should go oh, here. See, this is behind the scenes. You know, that's what Freeman's Garage Extra is all about. You see all this extra stuff and angles in the garage here that you otherwise wouldn't. That ball right there. Right in the center of your screen is a bracket on the frame. Now, I didn't even pay attention or think to look at that to refresh my memory if that was even there before going to the swap meet and looking for clutch linkage parts. But most people aren't going to go through the trouble of cutting that off a frame. So I was fairly confident that that was there. And also, these are engine mounts, transmission mounts, bell housing mounts. You could call them either. And 
what how it works is when we put our engine in the car. Oh, well, let's, let's let's go over here real quick. This is the engine that's going in our Tri Five Chevy. Look at that orange. Oh, oh, oh man. If, you, if you've been following this project on oh, pesky spark plugs, on Freeman's Garage and Freeman's Garage Extra, you already know what's up, man. Okay. We're using the front engine mounts right here. We're not doing side engine mounts. We're doing front engine mounts the way that it, that uh, the original V8 in the car was mounted from the factory and there's rubber bushings that go in here don't have any yet they're coming though but so we're going with the front mounts the bell housing bolts to the back of the engine and then these mounts they go to now oh, it's kind of goofy because they're bolted together right now but one on each side goes to the bell housing on each side, they go right there, center your screen. And right there, center of your screen. And I might as well, you know what, I'm gonna tell you what I paid for this stuff. So we pieced all this together. I got everything I'm showing you here in this video is all from the same seller. We pieced all this together and we agreed on 50 bones. Original stuff. 50 bones, price it out in the catalog, plus it's there in your face, you got it, no shipping, no tax. Yeah, that's a good price for me, 50 bones, man. And I paid, oh, what did I pay for the bell housing? I paid, yeah, he asked for 100, yeah, he asked for $100, no issue with that. Good deal for me. Go on Echo Bay and price that out and add shipping in. Sweet deal on that. And these, you can get these brand new in the reproduction parts catalog for 40 bucks. 20 bucks a piece ish. They wanted 40 for these. They had them there on hand. I said, okay. So that was good to go. And now our four speed. This is not a Muncie. If it was all aluminum, then it could be a Muncie. We could look into that, figure out if it is or not. It's not though. This is cast iron. It's a Saginaw. This came out of a probably a you know 70 something Vega or a Monza. And he had, I think he had 225 on here. He took 175, so it was 315. Yeah, so it was 275, and then hold on, let me do the math real quick. <laughs> okay, 175 for the transmission, 100 for the bell housing, <laughs> 40 for the mounts. That's 315, and then 50 for all that. So that's uh, 365. Correct. Now, so this is a Saginaw. And, well, let's go to this side. Well, we should have seven bolts here on this side cover. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. And let me see here. You know, just for layman's terms, if this was a three speed, there'd be two, two of these total. It's a four speed, so we got three. And we got the yoke on there. That adds some value and what else can I tell you about it well we think it's good to go it wasn't a warehouse for many years and with a whole bunch of other transmissions and <laughs> we are missing some bolts here but we think it's good to go hopefully it is and the number of splines on the shaft, or not, I'm sorry, not the number of splines, but if you can see right there, these grooves, 
the number of these grooves tells you what gears are going to be in this Saginaw. And we've got two. I'm tracking my cheat sheet here because I don't have all this memorized. Okay, so two grooves. I believe first gear, 311, second 220, third 147. It is possible that this could have come out of a Chevelle. Highly doubtful though. I think there might have been only one Saginaw that was ever in a Chevelle from the factory, possibly. Not really sure. It's this, the whole parts, numbers and stuff, it's, yeah. It all is a giant mess at times, but I'm looking for an R in one of the uh, casting numbers. We know that this is a four speed because of. Let me get my ground. Because three shift linkage arms, right? There'd be two if it was a three speed, which we said earlier. But, another thing is, is if your casting number starts with an R, that indicates a 4-speed Saginaw. Starts with an S, 3-speed Saginaw. So, just looking for some extra identification for fun skis. No, I don't see an R or an S. Magnet test? Definitely cast iron. Cast iron case, cast iron tail housing. That's indicative of a Saginaw. Where's the R? Where's the S? I mean the R, because we know it's four speed. Just verifying for fun. I can't find an R on here, but this casting number 3925656, that should mean from past experience that this is a 1968 through 1975 Saginaw four speed. And I think I bought one of these. No, actually, I'm positive. I bought one of these in 2012 or 13, I want to say, and I paid 150 bucks for it. So 175 today, not bad, I guess. You comment on that. Tell me what you think. I don't know everything. So if you know something I don't about Saginaw four speeds, put it in the comments. I'm always willing to learn. I'm coachable. You want to know why? I'm going with this Saginaw 4-speed in the 56 Chevy and not a Muncie 4-speed. Believe me, I would love to have a Muncie because it sounds cool. And, you know, they can uh, handle, you know, a little bit more horsepower than the old Saginaw. But here's the thing. The budget is only so big and I'm sick and tired of this car sitting here. I want to drive the thing. There's more than one type of Muncie, so just speaking in general. The best price that I can find on a Muncie four-speed from somebody that I can trust and that I know is in working order and doesn't need to be rebuilt is $800, okay? Which, that's there's nothing wrong with that. If we want a Muncie and this one's available for $800, there's value in being able to trust the seller snag it but the car needs a lot of other things still so when i found the the saginaw which i did go to the swap meet searching for a muncie you know ho hoping to get you know try to find an even better deal on one which is not likely to happen but i happened across the saginaw he said he'd take 175 let's put this in the car and drive the car and then put a muncie in it later we're not going to be drag racing the thing. And 365 for the bell housing, transmission, all the linkage, and the mounts. I mean, why, why not? Nagging that four speed just gets us a lot closer to dropping the motor in here and driving the car. And yeah, we need wheels and tires, but those are coming. Don't worry about that.